Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Reinforce 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here in Boston, Massachusetts for AWS Reinforce Amazon Web Services' first inaugural conference around cloud security. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Katie Jenkins, SVP, Senior Vice President, CISO, Chief Information Security Officer with Liberty Mutual. Yes. Big company, a lot of activity, insurance, a lot of, probably a lot of action on your side. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks so much. Thanks, thanks for coming on. Be here. So you've been in the job for about a year. Tell us about what's going on at Liberty Mutual. You guys have a large, company, 100 plus years old, you're right. the CISO, you're in charge, <laughs> you're running everything. We're at a security conference, tell us the reality, what's going on in the real world? Yeah, well this is super exciting that Reinforce, of course, is in Boston. This is Liberty Mutual's hometown. Um, as you mentioned, 107 year old security company not security company, insurance <laughs> company, but we're doing really cool things in technology and security specifically. Um, I would say to kind of bring this gathering together, we have a real rich pool of security talent, of security innovators that really matches up with what, what we're doing. So uh, Liberty Mutual has made a very significant commitment to moving to the public cloud for uh, our technology and computing needs. Um, we're in about year three of that journey, maybe 20 5% of our workload in the public cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really been a catalyst for not just transforming our technology organization, but transforming um, the yeah. way security does its work and the way security engages with uh, our development community. Well, you're the head honcho, as they say, there's a CISO, but you've had 20 plus years in cybersecurity. This is now kind of a new category with Reinforce being a branded show for AWS, so obviously. Yeah. The, um, this deserves its own conversation and industry, there's a lot of action going on. What does cloud security mean to you? Because this is the focus of this show. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just pure cloud, there's a lot of on-premise um, and on cloud interactions with hybrid, et cetera. Um, you guys have been doing tons of IT over the generations with yeah. Liberty Mutual, but cloud security is the focus. What does that mean to, to you guys from a cyber security standpoint? Yeah, um, in a word, enablement, um, I think that the public cloud offers us um, a really interesting opportunity to reinvent security, right? So if you think about all of the technologies and processes and um, many of which were manual over the years, I think we have an opportunity to leverage automation to make our work easier in some ways to, to um, avoid the situation where we have error or oversight. Gosh, we encrypted everything, but you know, this set of assets over here. So through using automation and enforcement, it's uh, an exciting opportunity to, to further develop our, our security capabilities. Um, but also, you know, cloud security, at, you know, cloud in general has been uh, a, a transformation of the way that our practitioners do work through Agile, and it means that security has to, you know, work with our technologists in a different way. Right? So you've had a really interesting background. Um, You've worked for a company that d does audits, I can infer from that. Uh, you've worked for a you know, services company, you've worked for a technology vendor, you've, you've been, worked as a practitioner, so yeah. you've seen it all sides. Yeah. And you know, Amazon made some comments yesterday uh, that said, look, the narrative in the security industry uh, has always been fear, fear, fear. And mm. we'd like to put forth, forth a narrative that is about Listen, the state of security is really good and strong. The union is strong, mm -hmm. and we got to work together yeah. in a positive message. So, my question is, are you, are you an optimist? Uh, <laughs> a reluctant optimist? <laughs> um, I think the days of having security be something that's fearful uh, are just not, are not doing us any, any, any justice in mm -hmm. that area. I mean, security is an area of partnership. There's very little of what we do in security that's just done by security practitioners. We need asset managers, we need compliance people, we need the privacy team, we need our auditors, um, we need procurement. I mean, there, there's just so many different parties involved in security that if we're just instilling fear in everyone, I think it'll be difficult yeah. for us to, to get that partnership. And we need to empower people, right? We need to both empower our developers to do their work in a secure manner, and we have to empower our whole workforce and our, and our trusted third parties to make good decisions. We're yeah. educating them on 
how to prevent phishing attacks. We're, we're doing all sorts of kind of culture-based initiatives, recognizing that uh, if it's just the security folks doing security, we're going to have a big gap. One of the things that we were um, discussing with a lot of other CISOs who we've been talking you know, privately off the record in the hallways and private briefings is the common theme of integration as a big part of dealing with ecosystem, either suppliers and or different teams within their different pillars of how they're organized internally and mm -hmm. externally. And then also reducing the number of security vendors that they've been buying products mm. from to get some also in-house coding teams working more closely on the use cases that matter. So this yeah. has become kind of a, a CISO conversation where what is, what is that criteria? How do you figure out who to have as suppliers? Yeah. Who's going to be around for the long haul? Yeah. Who's going to be that partnership for the enablement? So rather than having hundreds of vendors, we want to get them down to a handful. Yeah. Is that something that you think about or is that a trend that you see is happening now? Uh, it is a trend. Um, I think it starts at how we even procure and select our, our suppliers. I mean, we are really giving a lot of thought to the area of third party risk management and do we understand not just the elements of cyber risk and engaging with a third party, but, but privacy and, and continuity kind of risks too. So it starts there. Um, I don't have a sort of fabricated number in terms of I'm trying to go from X number of vendors down to Y, but I think that there's a very purposeful thought process that we're undergoing yeah. to say, um, yeah, we recognize in, in for certain technologies we want to have um, different providers to provide some of that redundancy. But let's be smart about that and let's make sure yeah. we really understand where those overlapping capabilities are because we don't want to be wasteful either, right? And the spend question comes up too uh, around DevOps, because what we're seeing is the DevOps and security um, paradigms are kind of coming together in terms of the concepts. Agility, you can do mm -hmm. some you know, prototyping, a hackathon, do some mm -hmm. things, and then ultimately trying to get into production are two different animals. So mm -hmm. that enablement of doing innovative things yeah. is agility, right? That's been a key theme, a positive theme. Yeah. And the question is, is there a funding model? Does it automatically get security funding? And mm -hmm. who's, what's, where's the spend? Is your spend going up? And so all the monetary spend questions come up. Yeah. How do you deal with that holistically, and how do you think about you know, the spend the conversation. Yeah, um, it's a really interesting one because of course uh, expense pressures, <laughs> I'm, I'm not immune to those. <laughs> but I also think that we're in a position where um, our executive leadership team understands the value of the work that we're doing, understands yeah. the importance to our policy holders. Um, so it's less often a need to uh, justify why we need more spend. Yeah. It's a demonstration of using that spend responsibly and understanding where we might have an uplift from something that we've automated to say, well now we have these resources that could be doing something else. There's yeah. always a something else in yeah. security, right? So if we're committed to reskilling yeah. and making sure that people are evolving, um, the work that they do and the talents that they have to address a different kind of. Um, so no rule of thumb per work. se, it's more of the, your management recognizes the criticality of it, therefore you can make those calls on your own, build, in, build it in, yeah, build it into projects. Tough questions yeah. and have to demonstrate <laughs> that, we're, that we're making responsible decisions, um, but I think it comes cool. down to knowing your technology and your team. So the skills gap obviously is a huge challenge mm -hmm. in, in your industry. We talked to somebody yesterday, said we just can't find people, so we have to bring them in and train them ourselves. We have to home grow them yeah. and take the long view. Um, Amazon talks about the shared responsibility model, and mm. a lot of small companies don't really understand that, and yeah. it's, it's misunderstood. Obviously Liberty Mutual gets it. My question is, as you see Amazon focusing on you know, compute and the storage and, and the database layer, uh, and, and, and you guys have the opportunity to focus on other areas that are your responsibility, that shared responsibility model. Have you been able to shift resources? How have you handled that? Do you, do you retrain people? Um, has it freed up, not, not, has it freed up time to do some of those more strategic things yeah. that you want to do, maybe respond more quickly, prioritize better, automate, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Can you yeah. talk about that from your perspective? Yeah, um, so the shared responsibility model is, uh, you know, I think that's you know, an important speaking point to this whole ecosystem. At the end of the day, Liberty Mutual, our duty is to protect 
policyholder data. It doesn't matter if it's in the cloud, if it's in our data centers, we have that duty to it's protect. It's on you. So I think <laughs> a lot about the skills that we will need in the future. So I've referenced sort of vaguely that, yeah, the compliance area is a particularly interesting area where we have opportunities to um, be able to more easily and cleanly produce artifacts that our auditors need, um, to really bring automation to a process that just has a very steep history and being manual in nature. So, yeah, I understand that tomorrow we're not going to ask everyone to make a big switch and all become developers, but um, we do. We send you know plenty of people to this conference and they are participating in the tracks on how to bring uh, automation to compliance, and uh, I think we invest pretty heavily in, in, in training opportunities for our people. How do you look up at the vendor lock-in conversation? Because with cloud, the value proposition certainly shifts, um, and the old model was, oh, you buy a you know, supplier and you're in, you're locked in with database or whatever. With cloud, there's a lot of switching cost opportunities mm -hmm. to, to move around, but also people are generally settling in on one main cloud and having you know, maybe a hybrid backup cloud or mm -hmm. multi-cloud as a secondary, because the focus of, of the teams. How do you view um, the lock-in when you deal with suppliers? Because you don't want to be stuck <laughs> with one mm -hmm. supplier if you mm -hmm. have the need to be agile. Yeah. You want to have options. How do you guys think about that? Because it being ag agility is key for you guys to be successful, not so yeah. much just dealing with the vendors. Yeah. Um, it, it does come down to balance. Uh, we do leverage uh, multiple cloud providers, right? Um, I think that, um, if we're too focused on making sure that we have that portability and we could quickly move from one to another, then we miss an opportunity to kind of deeply leverage um, some of the services, for example, that the AWS provides. Um, but we also, you know, we've been around the block a few times, right? <laughs> Not and, your first um, rodeo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think that um, it's important to have that perspective and, and prepare for the future. Do you um, attend board meetings regularly? Uh, I do, I do pre pre present out to our board of directors. Yes. Uh, is that a sort of frequent thing, once a year, once a quarter? I'm interested in what the board conversation is like with, yeah. with the CISO. Uh, it happens in a couple of different contexts, whether it's specific to sort of an audit readout or sort of a general state of state of security type uh, report out. Um, but yeah, we have a really engaged board that asks great questions about our partners, right? Um, about things that are more culture based in terms of how we're doing with our anti-phishing protection, and, and we talk about um, technology architectures too, and the work that we're doing to make sure that we're being more fine-grained in the way that we're authenticating users and devices, no matter where they work, in a more secure way. They're they're interested in that, so I feel pretty lucky to uh, both have the opportunity and yeah. get to speak you, pretty deeply to our would, program. Would you say the conversation is more of a strategic nature with the board? Is it more tactical? You just mentioned some tactical items. Is it more mm -hmm. metrics driven or sort of a combination of all three? Uh, it's, a, it's a combination, right? Um, I think they want to see uh, demonstrated uh, progress against areas that we've self-identified as areas that we'd like to prove, uh, improve, um, but they're also looking to see that um, I have a vision for where we're going. They're fully cognizant of the work that we've done in the public cloud and want to understand that the level of trust that they had in our security program on premise will um, perpetuate and advance into the cloud, so. When you look at um, cloud security and now security in general, you guys have, you've had a perspective on both sides and mm -hmm. cloud certainly accelerating and evolving fast. When you find a legacy app that you're re working with, we've heard other CISOs we've talked to who have had frank conversation and said, look it, we're deciding whether we're going to lift and shift it mm -hmm. or rebuild. Yeah. And so there's been um, some visibility into when it's great to lift and shift and when it's great to rebuild. So that's been a conversation that I don't think has been fully baked out yet in, in the full narrative in the industry, but it's yeah. one people are talking about. Yeah. What's your view on the, uh, when you have a, a legacy app and you want to lift and shift it or rebuild it? What, what goes through your mind? What's the conversation like in yeah. at Liberty? Um, it's a conversation that we have. We have legacy. I, I won't hide behind, behind that. Um, but it's not a conversation and a decision that's just made by technologists, right? Um, I think we have to articulate um, what the options are and that has to be a joint decision with our business partners. Um, I think generally um, I'm not preferring a lift and shift because I think that we are um, maybe overlooking some of the opportunities to make some of those security improvements that I see. But when we can get an application that's using our, our software development pipelines, that we have embedded security controls, we have better visibility, we have better enforcement, ensuring what we know 
uh, that we know what's going into the cloud has met um, you know, uh, a number of our security standards, so to speak, it's a much better position for yeah. us to be so in. So th this notion of multiple clouds, uh, I'm interested in how you handle that. You, you, you take separate teams, is it the same team sort of handling everything? And, and, and sort of a follow up on that is, I'm interested in your relationship with AWS and how that's yeah. affected your, your business. Yeah, um, so the security team does not own the cloud environment, so to speak. That's a, that's a, a secure DevOps team within our uh, infrastructure organization uh -huh. and they're very close partner of ours, right? So yes, I do have uh, resources that are specialists in, in AWS versus other clouds and others that um, are identity and access management specialists uh -huh. and are able to work on the development of those patterns across different cloud environments, right? Um, you know, I. I there's nothing bad that I can say about the relationship with, uh, with our AWS partners. I think we've felt very supported in um, understanding what we're trying to do, introduce us to new services, and introduce, probably most importantly, uh, introducing us to other customers that have been, you know, are a little bit ahead of us in their journey, so we can um, hopefully not repeat any of Amazon helping made. you with the security piece as well, I mean, that's something that they with the shared responsibility there, are they working with you on this? Sure. Securing those workloads as you yep, move to the cloud? Def we've definitely uh, leveraged their expertise. And, 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 and you mentioned that you guys kind of made a decision a few years ago to go all in on the cloud. How has that affected your, your business? What kind of results ha have you seen? Uh, is it met expectations? Is it exceeded? You know, yeah. behind? Yeah. I mean, as I mentioned, we do still have uh, a lot of right. a lot of our technology on premise, but for the use cases that have you know really seen that rapid acceleration, uh, you know, agile practices have allowed teams to develop code so much more quickly. Um, I think the business is generally delighted that um, their needs are, are being far more quickly met than. Yeah. So I got to ask you, the, there's a perpetual line in the men's room. It's quite long. Um, <laughs> so what's it like to it's be? Not long in the ladies. To be, I was going to say, <laughs> I don't think it is because I would say the proportion of women here is actually lower than even the industry and most conferences that we attend. So what's it like being a woman in this male-dominated security business? Um, I've been in it so long <laughs> that I, I certainly have grown a little bit accustomed to it, but not so accustomed that I'm not motivated on a daily basis to bring more women in. I think that security just has tremendous opportunities, and uh, you know, certainly the marketing of security professionals is hoodie wearing, white male kind of uh, persona. Just um, and there are opportunities it's for women. Really what are some of those opportunities for women who are STEM, science, like my yeah. two daughters, all STEM, love public policy, the sociology impact, yeah. society impact that's here. There's a lot of range of skills. What are some of those are. that you would I mean, inspire I, someone yeah. to? I, I studied math as an undergrad. We didn't have security back then. <laughs> I've since gotten a degree, uh, master's degree in cybersecurity, so that's cool. But you know, I think a great security professional is a great communicator, a great collaborator. I need technologists, I need developers, Developers, I need process experts. Um, I need people that think, you know, very deeply about, uh, you know, assurance type control. So um, we have. Uh, tried to attract people out of other you know, technology realms. And it's just not just math or computer science, <laughs> there's creativity involved, there's a lot of you know, things that, that um, blend themselves to all kinds of diversity. There is, I mean, you think about human psychology, right? I mean, we just totally transformed one of the systems that we use for um, approving, for managers to approve the access of their people, right? The, the past system was, was ugly, people yeah. didn't know how to interact with it. I mean, that user experience expertise that overlaid and how we developed our, our new um, platform Form just makes all the difference to make sure that it's actually a valuable process. Now, like I'm so frustrated, I'm just going to sign off on this because I I give up. Well, that's right? really interesting because of course you spend a lot of time and effort and money on things that drive revenue, yeah. uh, but this drives so much productivity and business value that you know it's not not maybe direct dollars, but clearly there. I have a question: when you recruit people, presumably you tap your network, and it's not just the good old boys network. You're tapping yeah. women. Are you able to successfully you know find? women or young women in particular that you can attract and recruit into your business as security practitioners? Have you had much yeah. success there? Yeah, so we definitely um, are outpacing industry numbers in terms of uh, women in security. We have a long way to go. 
um, you know, historically excluded uh, people, right? Not just women, people of color. I mean, we just have a long sure. ways to go, right? And I think it takes more than sitting back and waiting for a recruiter to bring a recruiter to bring me a slate of candidates to say, no, I know people, and I know people that know people, and I really have to um, invest myself yeah. and make sure that my leaders know that that's my expectation of them, right? I mean, I think that yeah. we feel that the diversity of thought, no matter how that diversity is expressed, is really important to, to doing the work that we Well, let we us do. know how we can help in Silicon Valley, and Dave's here in Boston yeah. as well. Love to help get the word out, so anything you need from us, let us know. Katie, thanks so much for those great insights. This is terrific, thank and you. And love to have you on theCUBE again sometime. Thanks for coming on. Very good. SVP CISO at Liberty Mutual here on theCUBE, extracting the signal, sharing the reality of, of what's going on in the security equation for cloud security. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>